Thank you, Jehovah God. We bless your name this morning. We have come into your presence in your sanctuary. Lord, send us your help one more time this morning. For us, faculty, staff, and students of Covenant University, open our eyes of understanding. Give us access to the secrets of God. In this fasting and prayer and on this 16th day, we ask that let every virtue of heaven be delivered to everyone that desires. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Please put your hands together for Jesus. You may take your seat. We have been on the mountain of prayers if you have been at all. Because not everybody in the same frequency. This is the 16th day of the prayer and fasting declared for the month of January as a commission, apart from that fact, as a Christian. Because some may say, okay, okay, well, um, I don't belong to this commission, so why should I be involved in the fast? As a Christian, if you are a Christian at all, there's a place of foundation. If the foundation be destroyed, then the righteous may struggle. There are many who are struggling and have not come to consciousness what they need to put in place. I was listening to my, Dr. Miles Monroe of Blessed Memory and talking about prayer and fasting. He said in that tape, he said, listen, you are surprised by the reason of the grace. And he said, these 21 days, myself and my wife have not drank or have not eaten anything. He said, we have only taken water. It's not if you fast, but when you fast. So it's not something. There are things in your life you will never reach to until you are ready to deny yourself. I remember the testimony or maybe a testimony or something was said during last semester. Some of us in the faculty here was carrying out a research and food had to be taken to him or the team, I don't know, in the office because food was not the agenda then. The research and hitting the bullseye of what is required. There are many, many of us who you want to get something done. Food is not there. You have even forgotten maybe you have eaten or not. So there are, there are heights that cannot be touched. And I think every student should understand this here. Because from careless mode here and there and all that, you just move around. <laughs> and the, the Holy Ghost just put something in my heart while the prayer was going on. And I want to sound the alarm on the holy mountain of Jesus this morning. One of, this, one of the um, prayer points said something and um, I quickly picked the scripture and I was going to say something on it. Many have maybe have not thought about that. I need to put it in place and put one or two things here. Second Kings and in chapter 2, one day Elisha was going very quietly. And while he was going on his way, there came forth some children out of the city and mocked him. <laughs> and said, go up, go up, bow head, go up, bow head. And he turned, looked on them, cursed them in the name of the Lord. And what happened? Two sheep came and cleared 42 children. The question you may have asked is that why did the sheep came to consume 42 children? Innocent children, you call them. But children who lack manners, I call them. Children of disobedience, I call them. 
And there are children that met their Waterloo at the wrong point, I call them. You know what I'm telling you this morning? Don't mock this prophetic ground. It's too dangerous. You are not in a school. You are on a prophetic ground. Don't mock this prophetic ground. It may too be unpalatable for you. Many have seen maybe the instructions of... Um, you know, I call everybody the servant of God because anyone serving the interest of God, DSA is a servant of God, the vice chancellor is a servant of God, um, registrar is a servant of God. As far as, you see, many may not understand this in the institution as an epitome of God's kingdom. Oh, you just got it wrong. You got it all together wrong. Job was not a pastor, he was a servant of God. Serving the interest of God. Daniel was serving the interest of God in politics. Excuse me. God is bringing forth an awakening. An end time awakening. Be awake in this institution. If you read church history at all. If you understand the times and season at all, you know we are at the brink of too many things. If you watch the news and the happenings all around the world, those children mocked. Instructions were given by DSA. Some people just still think that he's just talking. He has called meetings over and over again, reasoning. Don't worry. But I pray that no one. He said, that when that day came, they just mocked, bam, and they were just gone. 40 children. Is God not merciful? He's merciful. But it's a consuming fire. Those who don't understand that one, consuming just once, fire, and it came and it consumed them. Some informations were sent to my mail just today. 238 students who are in deep waters, not good standing. Probation, third class, relegation, deep seated inside, as required by Senate. God bless you, sirs and mass, for sending that list. We'll do the right thing with them. Is there help? And there are some who are, they are not taking any caution. Until they receive the letter advised to withdraw. In 300 level, in 200 level, after the investment, they have mocked the prophetic. So when I'm talking about prophetic, I'm not just talking about God's servant. Because everyone here working in the faculty, including this my privileged little self, is working according to divine agenda. There's a timetable of heaven. Vision 10, 20, 22 is a timetable agenda of heaven. It's not about the apostle over this commission. It's an end time agenda. Please be awake. You are either part of them that will see it come to pass or it runs you off. May no one here be run off. Did I hear believing in amen there? He said, why? God's servant has said, he said, you see, because God said so. It's not about me. God said so. God said so. So we cannot be one of ten in ten without the evident permeation of the spirit of God. On every sphere of this university. There's a mighty army that God is raising from this ground. That we reach to the ends of the earth. We are fulfilling a prophetic agenda. I'm so cautious about everything I do here, sir. <laughs> I'm so conscious about everything I do here. And this is a warning. To every faculty, staff, and student, most importantly, 
who are mocking the prophetic. You know why? Every time you walk in disobedience or against every instruction, in this institution, you are walking against the prophetic. And soon, just like those 42, 42, too many children, I tell you. But they didn't listen. Bow head, bow head. Nonsense, nonsense. They are not very, nonsense, nonsense. They keep saying nonsense. They said the nonsense in the wrong time and boom, that was all. That was all. You know, I prayed a prayer for you, 300 level and 500 level students during the Sunday service. May you finish well. Did I hear your name in there? I said, may you finish well. So that's a prophetic warning for everyone who have kept mocking instructions, mocking order, mocking the things that you ought to naturally work with. And that is why the foundation of God's help is available many this time many, to put themselves in order and see the help of Jehovah God. This is not a lecture house. This is the place of the help of God. Young men and women, there are great treasures in your life. May those treasures find expression. I said, may those treasures find expression. So cooperate with God. Cooperate with yourself. I'm not sure too many people like themselves. If by the instruction that was given last week, was carried out today. Many people will face many music this morning. 15 minutes before service starts, you must be seated. Some will still carry their long legs and do whatever they like. Good luck. The day the prophetic will blow fire, may you not be caught up. Christ will not solve the matter. The children, the parents of those people, they have done all what they do. Did you hear what God said last week's Thursday? He said, if you die, your parents will still eat. <laughs> okay, you were not there, okay. He said, if you die, your parents will still eat that day. But no one will die here. Amen. Let me hear your believing amen. amen. There's nothing to do there. So listen, partner, get it done. That's just a clear warning. The Holy Ghost just impressed it in my heart to say something on that. Mocking the prophetic. So when we talk about prophetic, it's not mocking Bishop David Oedipo or saying anything. That, but mocking prophetic is mocking instruction. Because everything that is gathered upon this ground, they are all emanating from a prophetic instruction. That's why you see Vice Chancellor working so hard <laughs> to fulfill the prophecy. That's why faculty working so hard to fulfill the prophecy. So when everybody begins to align, excuse me, if by the time the word, you see, God has said it, it will come to pass. And we will not just be one of ten in ten by reason of academic prowess, but by spirituality. Because that's what lifts every man. So everyone that will not tally with spirituality in this place, is between him and God. Very soon, the alarm will blow. And you remember, the eyes of the Lord go ahead to and fro. God knows every one of us, including this man to say, there is nothing hidden before him. You know my little song? You cannot hide it from God. You may cover your sins and this he may not know. You cannot hide it from God. This ground is too dangerous to misjudge. You cannot hide it from God. So what do we do right now? It's important that we come to the place of prayer. The place of God's help. What is wrong with me? Somebody is asking the question. Why is it I'm always disobedient to instruction? I looked at a student once and I called him, were you in Sunday service? He said, no. I said, why? He couldn't answer. What is the spirit that is working inside of you? That is the spirit you need to pray about. On Sunday morning, many pastor's children, many committed workers, you know in, at home, you can't, you can't even say, I'm not going to wear. 
they will burn do you inside that car. But you come to this prophetic ground and mess up. Sleep in the service on Sunday. Good luck. Don't worry. Just a little while. But I pray that no one will fall on the negative of the prophetic. Did I hear believing amen there? That's what it is. Gehazi took leprosy. Elisha took double portion. They were two different assistants. Leprosy or double portion, that's it. That's it. It's, it's the decision. So we must come to prayer because listen to me, we have said time and again, prayer does not only change the situation, it changes people. You need to change. You need to change your approach. You need to ask yourself, I must not walk as a child of disobedience. I need the help of God. I don't care what, what grades you have in school. It's important. We are not downgraded that. But when you don't carry the appropriate attitude that makes those grades to stand out, then you lose, it, you lose out. There are many first class outside. Like I said there, every conventional university we have in this institute, or be in the country, all doing well. You can get a first class in IFE or a UI or everywhere and all that. But what is the cutting edge that you have on this ground? Is spirituality. Having the mind of Christ. I'm going to drop three instructions for us of what God has packaged in this prayer altar. So please, I said, either you are playing or you are praying, he's going to show. For those who are praying, very good. And the Senate and everybody is praying for you too to make a change. We always pray prayers here. Lord, let divine, and some don't think that. They, they are praying for you if you pray for yourself. When advice to withdraw come, then the eyes now open. Where do I start from? When exceeding residency has come, the eyes now open. Where to start from? How many remember Ruke all right, so you know what I'm talking about. That's our Sunday little drama. The family advice to withdraw. First brother advice to withdraw. Second brother advice to withdraw. Third one also entered the same. It was only one little girl, the last born, who just had Christ in her. And that light, little light, was just shining. That's why the Rupert family, have you? <laughs> who never graduates from but somebody does not to understand that it's the junior brother of the one they expect it's the junior brother of the one that didn't finish school see that he's going in the same direction and we're not come to consciousness of saying excuse me why do everybody in this family need to drive in this direction of disappointment people having heart aches the prayer altar is the altar of divine encounters. The prayer altar is the altar of divine revelation. I pray that today that may the revelation of Jesus be available to someone here. Did I hear a believing amen there? Have you not heard? He said in that Isaiah chapter 58 and in verse 8, he said, then shall thy light break forth. When light breaks forth, darkness goes. When light breaks forth, light, light, light. It's not enough to look, but it's enough to see. Now, how do you look at something? Or maybe something is being explained to you. You say, oh, I see. That means now you understand. Many don't understand what is happening here. Now I see. The anointing we received Friday, I think it was for me because I needed to see many things and understand many things. And when God said that, the anointing to see. I pray some of you here who are students and the thank God for you and staff have received that if you were here all night. If you are not, well, but God's servant has said everybody should be generous with it. Ah, anointing to understand, to see what see is. He said, Isaiah chapter 16, verse 1 to 3, Arise, shine, for your light has come. 
I pray somebody, your light will come right now. Oh, I pray by student here, your light will come right now. Light has come. Glory of God has risen. The darkness shall cover the earth and darkness the people. But listen, there's a light of God arising for you. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice may you see the light of heaven. So please, the altar pray as the altar of revelation opens you up to truth. Revelation is not just only you have a, I see, because when you talk about revelation, some people say, eh, okay, I see uh, somebody, eh, I see this one. See for yourself. Some people are too very fast in going to see for other people. What are you seeing for yourself? All the prophecies that has come to pass in this commission, God's servant saw it for himself. That's why if you have ever been in the service where Bishop Eboyme was, he said, Bishop Eboyme was writing the minutes of all the prophecies. I said, he said, he didn't even say God said, he wrote in all those minutes, he said that he's 50,000 sit He said, he was writing, he said, So he wrote all those minutes. Bishop Jeremiah was a screenwriter who wrote everything down and wrote it down. Archbishop Benson the outside did not see it for him. Pastor E. R. Deboy did not see it for him. Kenneth Higgins did not see it for him. Kenneth Copeland did not see it for him. He saw himself. He had that relation himself. People who bother themselves about the revelation see about others. You better wake up. That's why I tell some, I, I, you know, I'm privileged to be a pastor. I often say in the church that I pastor, you can't see for me. Uh, just if you, if I saw revelation, you better keep the revelation to yourself. Look for the one that has to do with your own life and, and follow it. Some people will gather up some spiritual wings and say, okay, I see. No, you can't see nothing. And if God knows, you pray about it. Because I know some students, now, they may be seeing some visions and revelations for some people. If I catch you, oh yeah, 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 yeah. if I catch you, and they want to express their prophetic function, what prophet, what prophet, what? Who gave you that kind of? <laughs> it's good to put so things because some people still start seeing everything. You see? And some people who are not matured, when anybody just tell them the see, they are just like Mugu, they follow it. A woman was pregnant in one of the stations that pastored, and they went to the market, and one person just, one, okay, okay, I have two of them. One, it's just said, hey, madam, this is your pregnancy, back to the, he said, we're back to the, he said, this is your pregnancy. One man, there from a village where he get white hair. Every person for village get white hair. The woman was just sending it back to him. Then one day, my wife was in the car, in my yesterday. Then one, one, uh, whatever his name, one that might do or whatever, he said, Madam, come, make a talk and better for you. Talk and better what? We you get out of here. What are you talking better? Another person will sit down with a sorcerer and is listening to what he's saying. I know a young lady who went to the market and somebody just came and told her one information, two information that seems to tally with her. And that was how she accepted that this one was a, was a prophet or one man of God. Until the man carried her off, hypnotized her, molested her sexually before her eyes came up. I pray that the, your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. So what am I trying to say? Don't be seen for, see for yourself. Revelation in God's word, the truth of God's word. What makes me have consistent progress in my academics? Lord, show me. What makes me have consistent progress in life? Lord, show me. What will cause for my blessing and prayer? Lord, show me. Like I heard the testimony there. Is the prayer answering God? So he asks us to the minute details. You have been a PhD program and things is just like nothing. Lord, what or do I do to make this research come true? Hey, he shows you. Pastor here, the boy gave his testimony of his PhD thesis. I've said that before here. Yeah. How do you correlate mathematics to Exodus? 
But it shows. Revelation. What must I do? And the Holy Ghost showed him. He said, hey, son, this is it. You have this equation, you have stopped there. And God told his servant, Pastor Deboye, he said, divide the equation into two, solve equation one, solve equation two, add it at the end of the day. That was the end of his PhD thesis. How many have heard that testimony before? Good. So PhD and Exodus. I believe that somebody may be just like the children of Israel now. You are at the crossroad of your Red Sea. You don't know where to go. Let, they are pursuing you from behind. Here is the Red Sea. Here is Pharaoh and his horsemen. But listen to me. By the divine hand of God, he will show you the path to follow. You will never be stranded. Number two, the prayer altar is an altar of divine intervention. We saw Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 11 time in altar for us. Nehemiah mourned and wept and fasted and prayed. Lord, what? And God showed him what to do. God caused favor to arise for him. God rose up and told the king what to do. And the king helped him. We saw that in uh, Nehemiah chapter 2 from verse 1 to 8. Look at him. After Nehemiah have prayed, what was Nehemiah's prayer? He said, I beseech thee, O Lord of heaven, the great terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him. Ah, and observe his commandments. Can you see? Ha, can you see his prayer? Them that love him and keepeth his commandments. Let thy ears now be attentive and my, thy eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayers of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night. Let me tell somebody, day and night. For the children of Israel, thy servant, and confess the sins of their children Israel, which we have sinned against thee, but I and my father's house have sinned. Can you see his prayer? Sincere prayer. But look at when the answer was going to come, and it came to pass. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, and it came to pass that in the month of Nisan, in the 28th year of Azizarius, the king, that the wine was before him. And he took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now, I had not been before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad? Hmm. And seeing thou art not sick, this is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid and said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should my countenance be sad when the city the place of my father's sepulchre lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. Why should I be sitting down and looking when things are not in order? Why? Why? And God said, and he said, the king said, and the king said unto him, what, for what dost thou make request? Listen to me. God will give somebody an open check today. What is your request? And when he made the request, the request was granted. I pray that someone will have a divine intervention from heaven this morning. Did I hear believe in amen there? Amen. Finally, we must understand that the prayer altar is the altar of fulfillment of prophecy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 10 and in verse 9, for a great door and effectual is opened unto me, but there are many adversaries. Many adversaries. Great and effectual doubt. Many adversaries. Every adversary that have been standing against your progress and advancement shall be shattered. Amen. Did I hear believe in amen there? Amen. So young men and women, kings and queens in Hebron, please wake up. Wake up. Let the grace of God be available to you all. 300 to 500 level students. I pray that the prophecy of this year, I have dominion, will answer in your life. Amen. Did I hear believe in amen there? It will answer. It will answer. It will answer. Adversaries trying to resist God's word coming to pass in your life. I remember a student gave a testimony of how things were not in order with his life. I, one came on Sunday here and uh, I was glad. Glad because a, an 18 year old boy already has, you know, when I hear young people say, God told me, God said, and I walked in this, they, they gladden my heart. 
<laughs> if at age 17 he can hear what God's word say clearly, he's going to go on great miles with Jesus. And there are some that they can't even hear instruction from a human being. Talk less of the one from God. <laughs> so, 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 human being. School is instructing them. Is it the one God will now tell you you will do? No. Come at this time. No. Do this program. No. The children of disobedience. Ah, that won't be you, sir. Say an amen to it, please. Amen. That won't be you. And if you are disobedient, good luck. The prophetic anchor will soon hook you. It's very, very simple. So people of God this morning, that's just the submission, a prophetic warning. Don't mock the prophetic. So if you think Vice Chancellor is not a prophetic person, just Ms. Jai, he will gladly sign your letter. <laughs> Senate will sign it. DSA will forward it. Then it will be stamped, sealed, and delivered for you to go and find how to meddle with your destiny. But no destiny will crash here. There's one thing that's helped me all through my life. Reverence and fear of God. I'm not any man to account to anything in any way. I'm always afraid of God and the things he does in my life because I don't understand it. I still have the help of God. There is no strong man anywhere. Every man is a man that is helped of God. But where does he come to help? A place of prayer. Rise up on your feet. Please rise up on your feet. The place of prayer. 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 The altar of prayer. The altar of prayer. The altar of prayer. Come on, shout hallelujah. Well, I believe that someone this morning needs the help of God. He said, I lift up my eyes to the hills, where's cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord who makes the heavens and the earth. He that keepeth Israel has not slept nor slumber once. There are quite a number of persons who are here. You require God's help. Maybe you are born again. You need to rededicate your life. You can't explain what makes you do wrong things. And that's one, some of the things people don't understand. When you see that the forces that are against your soul, there's a Mount Zion film that talks, forces against my soul. How many of us have come across that, that thing? Forces against my soul. That is, there are things that are fighting you. They don't want you to go forward. You look at, like the young man who was chucked out of school because of climbing uh, defense during the uh, uh, Founders Day. He came and told me in the office, I don't know what entered me. How would this Covenant University student be climbing window like a frog? What? He did it. The truth about it, I knew he was sincere. He didn't know what entered him. He didn't know what entered him. Everybody was going in this direction. He moved the other direction and not only going the direction to now be climbing window. And he was being videoed like that, life. Something entered him. And something is in someone here. They are pushing you every day, very close. They are always pushing you. Pushing you in disobedience. Capture my biometrics now. Some people have not captured it till now. The day the hammer we hack now, eh, excuse me, another, he said, eh, please, sir, eh, I didn't know. Eh, you didn't know what? You didn't know what? You are here this morning, you know you need help. I'm only here to send to, be, uh, to help. That's what it is. I need the help of God. You are here this morning. I want everybody to pray. Students, please pray. Well, like I often say, all this talk and talk and talk. Every day is just like they are just talking. DSA is talking, you know, Chaplin talk his own. Uh, Everybody is talking. Lecturer too, they won't allow us to rest. Don't worry. Either we are saying the correct thing or not. Time will tell. But this morning, on this solemn walk, I want the choir to sing, I will open up my heart, ready for your holy fire. Now, you can close your heart or you can open your heart. But as many as their hearts, they are open. 
Your friend won't be there with the challenges of life that you have. But somebody wants to subscribe to say, Lord, I open my heart. I need help. I don't know why the spirit of disobedience has been working in my life. But I need your help. If you require that kind of help or prayer this morning to rededicate your life. Many have given their life to Christ, but nothing, nothing is not showing. Nothing is showing. Your parents are crying. A parent called me yesterday and he said, I have three children here. Pastor, my heart, I have to beg him, excuse me, sir, please just relax. Just relax. One just came back from suspension. The other, their academics is complete in shambles. He's paid. He doesn't know what to do. But the children are here. They are, they are, maybe they are hearing me now. Nothing, nothing. They are just, they are just there having a nice time. But the man is almost having an heart attack at home there. Because of these same people, he has finished paying school fees for. He wants to look for people to be supervising. I said, we don't, there's no, there's no opportunity for that. They are grown-up children. Would I be pursuing them up and down here? No, I cannot. Thank God for our local parents' uh, our, 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 our department. They need to get something done. But the children themselves, have, they said a child who lifts up his hand is the one you carry. The one who do like this and say, a familiar, they said, don't worry. Stay, sit down there. The one that said, mommy, they carry his hand. I pray that may your hands be lifted and let heaven carry you. The Lord will lift you out of the Mary clay. So please, choir, sing that song. You want to be lifted out of the Mary clay. I think it's set time for you to receive the help of God this morning.